So I've just spent a lot of time explaining how not to use Pukert's Law. Uh, you may be wondering, well, how do you use it then? Is it useful? Well, yeah, it's useful as long as it's used correctly. Here I have a T1275 data sheet from Trojan. They're a very reputable battery manufacturer, and you can trust what they say. They know what they're doing. Uh, there's plenty of others that also do. This is just randomly chosen. I don't mean to endorse their particular brand. So you take a look at their ratings here, <clears throat> and they do give you pretty useful information. They give you the amp hour capacity at different rates. At the 5 hour rate you get 120 amp hours, at the 10 hour rate you get 134 amp hours, at the 100 hour rate you get 166 amp hours. So the data sheet here on this battery seems to claim that the amp hour capacity depends on the discharge rate. But as I demonstrated before, this capacity is just the useful capacity. If you discharge the battery at the 100 hour rate um, continuously with a DC constant amperage draw, this is when your battery will drop to a voltage that is deemed not useful. If you want to discharge it very quickly, it will drop to that voltage much quicker. But that doesn't mean that your capacity went away, it just means the remaining capacity is not useful. Go ahead and see my previous video if you haven't already for a demonstration how you still can use that extra capacity. And you can prove this to yourself with any battery. You can prove it to yourself. That is the way that it works. And also I want to note this other graph. I don't know if you can see it or not, so I'm going to get closer. Here they have a graph on the next page of the data sheet of percent capacity versus temperature. And this would seem to directly contradict what I'm trying to say here. Percent of available capacity versus temperature. I mean, how much more direct can you get than this? Except this is just in a typical use scenario. So they took one of the discharge rates, probably the discharge rate that this battery is rated at, and when the battery is very cold, its internal resistance is maybe four times as great. So you can only get one quarter the, uh, the amperage out of it. And effectively, it becomes useless when it gets down to a state of charge. If your battery is at a very high temperature, let's say your battery is at uh, 50 degrees Celsius, then you might end up with over 100% of its rated capacity. And that just means that you can discharge the battery deeper and still get a useful voltage out of it. But down here, when it's minus 20, your internal resistance of that battery is, and chemical resistances are very, very high. And you may only be able to discharge it down to, say, 70% state of charge. And after that, there's not enough ions left in that uh, electrolyte solution. Your resistance is too high, and you can no longer effectively use the rest. If you take this battery that is, fully, that, uh, is no longer useful at your current draw and bring it indoors, you can then continue to use the rest of it. So, to uh, give you just a simple logical argument for this, um, let's go through a simple thought, thought experiment here. Everyone loves free energy, right? YouTube especially, there's all kinds of bogus videos out there on a free energy. Things that violate the uh, basic laws of conservation of energy and whatnot. Uh, but uh, let's do our own thought experiment here and show how the basic concepts that are widely popular would allow you to get free energy. So, I have my house, right, and it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit inside my house. And here's my door, I can open up my door, here's my front step and my sidewalk going out to the street. And uh, so I have a battery in here, right, that I happen to store inside for whatever reason. This battery is now fully charged. It is a 100 amp hour battery. Works great, I love it. So I take this battery and I set it outside on my step. This is the exact same battery, it was fully charged, I just moved it outside. And you know what, it's really cold outside. Let's say it's minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Really, really cold. So we take a look at this graph that we got from Trojan Battery Company, and they don't even go to minus 40. But if I extrapolate this line, it would end up at about uh, maybe 15% capacity. So according to this data sheet, I would only have 15% of the rated capacity. 
of this battery at minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not very good. So what would really happen is if I draw 15% of the amp hours out of this battery and then move it back inside, I could continue drawing the remaining 85% of the capacity. That's what would really happen. But let's say that this is a free energy universe and you can get energy for free. So let's exploit this. I have 100% available here, I have 15% available here. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to discharge this battery completely inside my house, give some nice heat because it's cold outside and I want heat. So I'm going to discharge this battery outside my house and then just set it outside the door and put it on my charger. So I have my charger here, I'll clamp that up <clears throat> and recharge my battery outside because it only has 15% capacity now. So I'll put in 15% of the amp hours, that should bring it up to fully charged, right? And then haul it back inside, and I'll get 100% of the capacity back. I just got a whole bunch of free energy. Except it doesn't work that way. Because if I discharge this battery, and took 100 amp hours out of it, and then set it outside and let the battery cool off, well, for one, it would freeze solid, but we'll ignore that. I <clears throat> And I put it on this charger, I would have to put in more than 100 amp hours to bring this back up to capacity. But how's that possible? It's at minus 40 and this graph clearly says that it's about 15% available capacity. So let's think of it this way. What happens when I put this battery outside? Now you can do this experiment yourself. A fully charged battery where it's cold and where it's warm, you can move it from one place to the other and back and over here and back and over here and back and it doesn't affect the battery's state of charge at all it's still the same. You could leave the battery inside for a week, or you could store it outside for a week and then bring it back inside. There's no change. So where did that capacity go? Did it disappear? Did it mag magically come back when you brought it inside? It just doesn't make any logical sense. And the reason that it doesn't make any logical sense is, is because it's illogical. It doesn't make sense. The battery has the same capacity at any temperature. It just may not be a useful capacity. If you want to discharge this battery at 100 milliamps, it won't make any difference whatsoever. You'll be able to start at 100% state of charge and end at 0% state of charge. It will work just fine because your internal resistances, chemical resistances, and etc. don't really matter. One argument you could make to remedy this situation and for me to still be incorrect is to claim that somehow the temperature change of this going from minus 40 to 70 somehow drives some sort of chemical reactions so that there's an exothermic reaction that occurs when you transport the battery uh, from one climate to the other in an endothermic reaction that occurs in the opposite direction but that's just simply false. The battery behaves exactly like a thermal mass. You could take a block of iron or anything else, transfer it between the two areas, and it would behave exactly the same as this battery. <clears throat> it just behaves like a thermal mass. It doesn't drive any sort of chemical reactions. You still end up with this picture. You have a battery, you have electrolyte, you have certain chemical reactions that have the potential to take place, and they will take place once you discharge or recharge the battery. And that's just how it is. So, Pukert's equation does not state anything about the discharge rate versus the capacity. The way that it is generally used on the internet is entirely incorrect. Now, it does have useful applications, and I may go into that in a later video, but I did want to state here in this video that, for one, temperature does not affect the capacity of a battery, and two, discharge rate or charge rate does not affect the capacity of a battery. And I think I have done an adequate job of explaining why that is the case, and hopefully my demonstration explained that it is not the case in a practical circumstance. And I encourage you to do your own tests at various temperatures and at various discharge rates to prove or disprove uh, the general beliefs that exist out there. And there you have it. I'm sure that this video will be somewhat controversial. I don't know how many people will actually end up watching it, but for some people it will likely be very controversial and 
Hopefully you'll do your own experiments and prove this to yourself because I have done those experiments with real batteries in real life and I know that I am correct. So I encourage you to do those experiments yourself and prove me wrong. And go ahead and make a video about them, I encourage it. And uh, go ahead and share them with me, I'll, I'll be willing to watch them if they're well done. But in any case, poor Mr. Pukert. His law is misunderstood. He was a brilliant scientist and I respect him for that. But uh, the way that Pukert's law is used today is really unfortunate. It has led to a lot of misunderstanding about how batteries really work, how to size battery banks, etc. And I may go into a video later on how to properly size a battery bank, but I don't want to promise that at the moment, so don't hold me to it. In any case, I hope that this video series has helped to uh, enlighten, educate, or otherwise encourage people to do their own research and their own experimentation to really understand how these things work. Thanks for watching.